So something I'm sure happens every single day is that like a 12 or 13 year old comes along and decides like they want to explore metal a little bit. You know, maybe they listen to some Metallica and Iron Maiden, or maybe they're coming from the Bring Me the Horizon and Asking Alexandria route. But, you know, however they got there, their interest has been piqued. And so they come along to Google or YouTube and they throw something like Best Metal Bands 2020 or Best Metal 2021 into the search bar. And when you throw that in the search bar, you get a lot of albums like these. And the problem with these albums is that if you come into them having only listened to the aforementioned bands, you're not going to get it. You're not going to enjoy it and you're going to have such a bad time that you'll probably walk away thinking there's no way you'll ever enjoy it. The truth is that extreme metal has a huge learning curve, and even if you want to get into it, it still takes like a few hundred hours worth of listening just to form the neural pathways required to extract the important information from the mix. It's really easy as a budding metalhead to wander into this Ad Nauseam album because Anthony Fantano recommended it or something, and just get your face absolutely melted. And then if every metal album you come across is an experience like this, then you just start to think like, well, hey, you know, I guess, I guess metal's just not for me. But crucially, in those search results, this album is going to appear. And if you decide to give it a listen, it's going to be more challenging than Metallica. But it's not going to be so challenging that you won't be able to see the appeal. You're going to hear the track Amazonia, and the main riff is Joe Duplantier flicking one of those doorstop thingies. And then you're going to hear the track Into the Storm, and notice that they used one of those obnoxious, like, ding, 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 train crossing signs in the intro. But those kind of silly things are exactly what grabs a novice listener's attention and holds it for long enough that they get convinced that this album is at least something they can enjoy. And now that person is a Gojira fan, and they go look into those songs that they really enjoyed. And they learn that Amazonia, uh, the doingy thing, is actually Joe Duplantier bending the guitar string above the nut, and it's an homage to Ruth's era Sepultura. And they learn that the awesome syncopated riff in Into the Storm is actually what Meshuga is well known for. And now you've not only gotten them past that realm of Metallica and bands like that, but you've also given them a path forward into that next level of metal. You know, like a person who's only familiar with Metallica might not really be able to hop into Meshuga or Sepultura and enjoy it, but a person who's familiar with Gojira probably can. And that's how people really get into metal. Like, no one just hops into Alphaville and tanks it until they enjoy it. You go from band to band to band, and each step of the way, you learn how to enjoy and appreciate a new type of music, and also the context in which it should be enjoyed. And then over time, you build those neural pathways. So I think I'll be brief here. Why is Fortitude good? Well, mostly because it maximizes accessibility while still staying true to its metal foundations and just kind of overall being a fantastic piece of musicianship. Fortitude is an album which will be enjoyed by both novice metal listeners and hardened metalheads alike. And so it's one of those rare opportunities that allows dudes like me to bring some of the uninitiated a little bit deeper into the metal scene. So I want to give that a try. I made a playlist which I feel represents some of the inspirations and peers of Gojira. So if you're relatively new to the metal scene and you don't really know where to go next, I'd recommend that you check it out and see if any of the songs pique your interest. They're all from very well-regarded artists in the metal scene, and they extend quite a bit beyond what you'd be able to find just from the, like, Gojira's-related artists. I also took some care in ordering them to show how their sounds are related, and also the songs become a bit more extreme and less accessible towards the end of the playlist. All right, I know this was a really unconventional review, but there are a lot of really high quality Gojira reviews out there already, and I wanted to do something a little different just to offer as much value as I could to those of you who've come across this video.
So that's all I've got for today. I hope I've offered a little bit of insight and perspective into how I view this album and Gojira's role as a band. And if you're relatively new to metal, I hope you will check out the playlist. It is linked in the description. All right, that's it. I'm done. Thanks for watching.